Hey YouTube, welcome back to Dwayne's World. So I'm very excited to be able to put together a video for you today. I know it's absolutely been a while, but at the same time, it hasn't been all green grass and stripe action. <laughs> you want to find out what I'm talking about? You better stay tuned. All right, guys, so here we are. Our lawn look overall looks pretty good when you kind of step back and look at it. But as you look here, especially along my edges, the color is slightly off. Now, I have been fertilizing. I've been using Humic Max's 1608. Uh, definitely absolutely love that fertilizer. You know, stripe action is definitely still on point. Got a mow in yesterday. Uh, however, as you can kind of see there, like towards the middle lawn, looks like some yellowing going on, like I mentioned, along the edges here. So initially I had believed that this was most likely because of some watering issues where maybe I wasn't watering. You know, I turned off my irrigation quite a bit, but we've just been getting slammed with rain here in Southern California, which is very unusual. It's not till I kind of came up to here that I realized that this is not necessarily a watering issue. This is a fungus issue. And generally with a fungus issue, it's not gonna go away on its own. So I definitely want to treat it. I'll be throwing some propiconazole 14.3. I got a little bit left over, just enough to be able to cover this area uh, before I have to pick up some more. But one of the things that I think had made this worse uh, is generally I don't catch my clippings. So initially where this started out just along the edges, I think has spread now to other parts of the lawn and mainly because of the fact that those clippings are not being caught. So if you ever do have fungus in your lawn, you absolutely want to make sure you are catching your clippings and do not let them go back into the lawn as well as also ensuring your mower is nice and clean afterwards. Uh, let me take you over to a different part of the lawn here. Here's my side project and as you can see here, the color looks pretty good. I've been practicing with my rotary scissors over here, but if you notice here, um, you know, I have a couple areas that just never quite filled in, but nonetheless, I got some yellowing as well. And I remember recently, I tried to real mow just like one or two passes here. Uh, and I think with the contaminated mower, I probably spread uh, that fungus over into this lawn because as you guys can see here, I got some yellowing as well. So we're going to take care of that today. Um, again, like I said, we're going to use propiconazole 14.3 and hopefully that should be able to knock it out at the curative rate, which will be two ounces per thousand per gallon of water. All right, so what I'm going to be using today to apply my fungicide is my Ryobi four gallon backpack sprayer. With it, I'm going to be using my T-Jet air induction nozzle. I would have preferred a flood jet tip. However, the air induction tip has worked well for me in the past when I've done a soil application. Um, so it's definitely going to be able to get the job done today. With the fungicide itself, I'm going to be using propiconazole 14.3. The rate I'm going to be going with is two ounces per thousand uh, per gallon of water. One thing I like to do anytime I'm doing any type of treatment to the actual soil, such as a fungicide, is add a liquid aerator. This one is by Lawn Star and it absolutely works well. Um, the rate I'm going to be going with here is one ounce per thousand. And that's just really going to help the fungicide really get down into the root zone uh, to be able to work that much more effectively. And with that, let's get a mixing. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and apply my two ounces here. Got that there. Now this bottle is pretty much empty now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just remove and just put in the rest of the contents here. Uh, just because it is pretty much gone. All right, and I think what I'm going to do also, just use it as a measuring cup, I might as well, is I'm going to go ahead and just pour one ounce um, into that little small measuring container, considering this bottle is going to be discarded uh, afterwards. Uh, just because it has been a little while, you definitely want to make sure you do shake up your liquid aerator there. Um, the nice thing about this liquid aerator, not only will it help as far as soil conditioning, it also does have humic, uh, humic uh, acid in it, which is absolutely good for the soil. And this won't necessarily hurt anything. If you go a little over an ounce, it's fine. But I have a little bit more than an ounce there, as you guys can see. So I'll go ahead and mix that in there. And that'll be more than enough uh, to get the job done. Now, like I mentioned, I went ahead and already applied my one gallon of water in here. So I'm going to go ahead and just mix it up and we'll be good to go. Now, one thing I also like to use is I use a five gallon paint mixer here uh, to help mix up the chemicals um, in my backspack sprayer. Okay. So one thing I also like to use is this is a five gallon paint mixer. Uh, this will definitely help mix up those chemicals. You just go ahead and attach it to a drill and you'll be able to mix your chemicals pretty well. So I'm go ahead and do that. Right. There 
are good to go there. And now we'll go ahead and just put our cap on, seal it up, and I'll probably just give it one extra mix uh, just to make sure everything is suspended. And we'll go ahead and start applying this to the lawn. Now, one thing I did forget to mention, I went ahead and primed the tip. And basically what I mean is I ran my chemical back through into my backpack sprayer. Uh, so that way I know when I go ahead and release this for the first time, I'm going to have all of my solution mixed up and ready to go. So now we'll go ahead and just spray. All right, so one thing I want to mention before I actually start spraying here, it is windy today. So again, not the best day to do this, but even more so why you want to make sure you are wearing proper PPE. You know, I got my gloves on, all long sleeve. I'm wearing my rubber boots, um, as well as, you know, the fact that I put that lawn aerator into my solution here. There is humic acid on there, so that tends to not be very nice when it gets onto uh, shoes and whatnot or, or your skin. Uh, so definitely want to make sure that you take the proper precautions uh, before you go ahead and start spraying. And with that, let's go ahead and spray the lawn here. All right, so that's probably about it. Um, what I'm gonna do is I have a little bit left here in the backpack sprayer. So I'm just gonna go over the areas again that look like they're the worst, uh, just to make sure they are nicely treated and I'll be good to go. You know, I calibrated my backpack sprayer and what that basically means is um, I know how fast to walk uh, and apply my liquid to be able to get down 1,000 square feet. It kind of turns a little bit more into muscle memory um, than anything else whenever you're applying anything, but it absolutely has made a world of a difference for me and got me that much more comfortable whenever applying any type of uh, liquids from a backpack sprayer. So there we are, all treated up. It's kind of funny the sun's coming out now. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, hopefully this works. You know, put a lot of work into this overseeding project over this uh, fall season and definitely would hate for it to all go to waste uh, because of some fungus there. You know, complain that there's no rain and now we get a whole bunch of rain and this is what happens. <laughs> uh, so happy now to have got my uh, fungicide treatment down. Even more happy that I still had two ounces left of that propaganazole 14.3 left to be able to treat this problem I have in my front lawn. Uh, thank goodness it's less than a thousand square feet, which two ounces should be more than enough uh, to be able to take care of that problem. Now, some people may be wondering, well, Dwayne, if you're out of propaganazole, why not just run to Home Depot and pick up some fungicide? And I could have done that. There's a couple different options that Home Depot sells. Um, BioAdvance actually has the active ingredient as propaganazole, and that may have worked. But BioAdvance, the, the problem with it, not that it's a bad fungicide, is when you look at the concentration of how much propiconosol is in it, it's like 2 to 3%. You know, when you compare that with propiconosol is 14.3, 14.3% of that uh, particular liquid is propiconosol. So it's a much stronger active ingredient uh, of the propiconosol. So that's why I chose to go with it. It probably will not require a sec second application. If it does, I'll probably buy some more. It's not too expensive when you kind of add it up. You know, uh, fungicides in general are not cheap. But when you look at how much you're getting and the square footage you're covering, you know, some people think, you know, it's cheaper to go to Home Depot or a Lowe's or something like that, but not always. You know, you definitely want to do your homework uh, before you go ahead and decide to purchase some of those stuff off the shelf because you can probably find something else. When you kind of do the math and how much coverage you actually get, 
you can actually get a better value sometimes by getting to better stuff uh, to be able to fix these problems. Now the problem though is even though I've applied the fungicide, you have to correct the issue that started the fungus in the first place. So what was the issue in my case? Well the issue in my case is I don't generally get as much rain as I got here in Southern California within the last three weeks. I would probably estimate we probably got about three inches of rain. Now somebody may say, well Dwayne, that doesn't sound like a lot. And it's probably not in most parts of the country. However, for me in Southern California, when you combine that with the irrigation I have that I was probably throwing another inch of uh, water at the lawn, you know, we don't have the sun during the winter time. So there's nothing really to absorb it. I think my front lawn also, there's a lot of clay in the soil. So the absorption isn't very good as well. Um, so there's a lot of problems I have on my front lawn that I'll hopefully be able to correct this upcoming year. But all those things combined cause that problem. So for right now, no more irrigation. We'll let Mother Nature do what it's doing for what it's doing right now because we seem to be getting a fairly consistent amount of rain. Um, and that's probably going to be the case for the next couple weeks. Um, so I'll just let Mother Nature water my lawn for me, which is very unusual <laughs> for me in Southern California. If you have a fungus issue and it's caused by whether it's over irrigating or Mother Nature, you got to make sure you figure out what the problem is so that way you can prevent it from happening again in the future. And with that, be excellent and party on.